Hand holding businesses has been singled out as a key step towards strengthening business operations, which will consequently help the country build a critical mass of enterprises to support its revenue aspirations. The starting point, according to Private Sector Foundation, government should be supporting communities having groups deemed critical for grassroots business growth. We are trying to tell a story to government that you need to reap where you sow. Because if government is not supporting these people, what we are trying to do today is to offload this, to, this responsibility to government, local government, nurture these people. The best way to broaden the tax base is to nurture enterprises. So if, if someone is borrowing money from the VSLA, or they're actually mobilizing resources under the VSLA, to do these enterprises, help them, encourage them, let them expand their businesses. It could actually even be a two-year tax holiday, three-year tax, tax holiday, that they don't pay taxes until they are three years. By then, the investment has grown. It cannot close. Government comes to reap the money. But once you, once you want to reap where you have not sold, you just kill and stifle the businesses. Residents in the Apache district, for example, although keen on doing and expanding their businesses, have for instance found it hard to attract banking services as most players fix eyes on urban centers. This place is so remote. We are very far from Lira town, we are very far from Apache town. From here to Apache town is over 40 kilometers. And from here to Lira town is equally over 40 kilometers. But recently we contacted Post Bank. They accepted to come and work with us. Or they accepted to give us loans with the fair interest rate. And as we talk now, they have already supported eight VSLAs in this sub-county with the loans. The loans is ranging from 500 to 5 million. 500 for individuals and then 5 million for the groups. So that's the only bank we've been able to uh, access. Leveraging the SACO's promotion of policy of government, members of Watanyam Village Savings and Loans Association Group resorted to domestically mobilizing resources for onward lending among themselves to bridge the financing gap created by the absence of sufficient lenders in the district. And in that first circle we are able to raise uh, a total of about 29 million. That was between 2013 and it ended in March 2014. The second circle started in 2014, 2015 in March. And in second, that second circle, we were able to raise uh, 59 million, yes, including uh, the, the interest that was charged on the money borrowed. Now the third circle started from 2015 and it ended early this year in March. And we were able to drop slightly to 50 million. These seven groups help members access financing to cover expenses such as medical bills and school fees without having to sell their fixed assets like land. We started in 2013 where Easter or husband died, liver with the three children, but uh, unfortunately they all have sickle cell. But he has started to uh, join this VSLA, he saved, he bought, he bought the loan, he bought the cattle, he's now sending those children to school, he's doing well, even in the food staff, it has improved. So this is one of the projects that belongs to the Watanyim Village and Savings and Loans Association. Very, very unbelievable story. They hope to grow it more and more. They want to sell some of these animals to markets like Kampala and markets like Juba to be able to inject the money back into the seven game. The key message, though, is that as far as they might appear to be from the center, the savings culture and the finance mobilizing capability is very much alive among these groups. It could, however, be better with a little more external support. Malcolm Sime. And TV business.